The Coconut Grove was a pretty popular place at the time for young people. We came, uh, I, I was, must have been around 8 or 8.30, and we were seated in what was called the terrace. And as you entered the grove, to the left was the uh, check room and the flight of stairs going down to the Melody Lounge. And straight ahead was the uh, dance floor, the orchestra, and to the left was the terrace. We rode around for a while and then it was about 7.30 when we went for dinner. It was packed with people and I can remember we had to leave our coats in a coat room. I remember the coat room was to the side somewhere. And I, I remember I had a jacket that I loved and <laughs> never saw it after that. So, but then Freddie and I wanted to dance and there was the dance band. So we went down and were dancing. And of course the ceiling of the dance floor was all blue cloth. Uh, well, at the time of the fire, like I say, uh, the place was jammed. I normally would have gone out on a, on a night where it wasn't so crowded. I would have gone out to the Melody Lounge, but that was my favorite place. It was nice, quiet, piano player, a woman singing, telling jokes, constant entertainment down below, and a lot of action down there. That night, I was in the dressing room. I heard a rumbling, a kind of a sensation of, of vibration. I said, what the hell is this? So of course I got up, went down, opened the door, got up the head of the stairs and looked down and I could see this crowd of people jamming. I thought it was a free for all because the Boston College was there. Uh, I think it was, uh, there was a football game, Boston College and, and, and Holy Cross, I think. And there was a rivalry and I guess one of the teams, that were, the winners were there. So of course I figured there might have been a fight going on. So I'm watching the crowd down there and I started to go down to, to get see what the action was. With this big cloud of smoke with sparks in them, bellowing coming up the stairs at me. And I say, whoa, this is no place for me. So I, whoa, I went back into the restaurant, closed the door. We had just about finished our meals and the first thing that happened was from the direction of the front door, which included the stairs. We heard a lot of commotion coming from that area and people running up the stairs and away from the uh, lounge entrance toward the front door. But by that time, the lights went off and then a cloud of dense smoke invaded from that front area right through the hall of the ballroom and all we could hear was tables being turned over, dishes being broken, people yelling and it was total panic. So I get out and I get in the dress room. I said, I'm going to get my stuff together. I had a camel hair coat. I've been through this before. Beautiful camel hair coat. That was in style. Brand new. I'm going to save this. I've got the camel hair coat, my tuxedo, put that. But I get my tap shoes, so they were very expensive. And I gather all this stuff up and I'm saying, well, I'm going to, I don't know if I should go down there. And I thought of the rope, but I, I thought maybe I'd go back down because it seemed like the people were going out. They were getting out down below. When all of a sudden this guy come charging through the door, like a madman, and he's running through the dressing room. And I've got all my stuff in my hands, right? And he goes through this plate glass window like this. I said, holy, what is going And I, I, I dropped everything, my, my, my brand new camel hair coat, tuxedo, and I followed him out the door, I mean through the window. So he's still going out the window and I'm right behind him. All the chorus girls come out of their dressing room, through my dressing room, 
all behind me, and whoever else was behind was behind me trying to get out. I have, uh, believe me, when I was out, I wasn't counting them. All I know is there was a bunch of people behind me, some crying, some, you know, so what is going So I'm heading over. What I was afraid of on the top of the roof was that there might be sections between one building and another building, and I'd fall in between them. And then I'm saying, well, I gotta get to the edge to find out how I'm gonna get down out of here. Meanwhile, somebody found a ladder behind us. Somebody said, I forgot a ladder. Well, anyhow, they brought the ladder forward. So the four chorus guys, that's, that's including myself, we got the ladder, we lowered it over the side to see how far down, and it fell far short from what it was gonna be to the, to the ground. So what it is, you got a ladder that's halfway down, maybe. Maybe, I'm just saying. So what do you do with a ladder like that? But it was the only way down. So we, the three of us, three of us held onto the ladder. Andy, myself, Dave Perlman was holding on, and Bob, the other fellow, was helping. The, we had to get the girls, chorus girls off the top. While these people were going down the ladder, which seemed to take forever, it dawned on me, who's going to hold the ladder for us that was holding the ladder? But that was solved quickly because all of a sudden somebody must have went to got a hold of the fire department tell it that there were people on the roof trying to get down and they came with ladders we'll talk about the marines were landing they brought those ladders up down we went everybody made it off the top of the roof when we saw the fire the last thing i know fred said to me get down on your hands and knees and cover your face the next thing I knew, I was in Mass General, and he was gone. I mean, I don't, to this day, really know how I got out. Now, some of the write-ups have said I was by the revol revolving door, but who knows? You know, I don't know if I'll ever know that answer. So, being seated where we were, I took my wife, and uh, went around the little gate that was separating, separating our table from the ramp downstairs. And the mob also sensed that that was the way to get away from what was going on in the other part of the dining room. And in that commotion, my wife was pulled away from me, and uh, she was pulled into the crowd by all the pulling and shoving and so forth. And I fought my way through, and I did. I took her by the arm and shoulders and pulled her out. And uh, all the screaming was going on, too, with total, total disorganized panic. And when I got her out of the crowd, I said, we've got to get away from these people. And uh, I went a little bit further into what was the kitchen. And just then a, uh, a waiter came by. I recognized him by his white jacket. And I took him by the lapel and I said, how do you get out of here? So he pointed to the other side of the, uh, of the crowd. And there was a door over there. But by that time, there were 10 or 12 people already piled up because the door opened out inward and they were trying to push it outward so they got nowhere. So at any rate, uh, he pointed and I saw, and I s said to my wife, nothing doing, we're not going over there. So I took her and we went in further I didn't, it was pitch black. I didn't know where we were going. And something eventually made me look up toward the ceiling and there was a window up there. So I pushed a table that was standing by under the window. I got her up on the, uh, on, a, on the table. I got up and uh, the window, I think was one of these that swings open. And I think I pushed it out and helped her out through the window, and I followed her out. And uh, we found ourselves in an alley uh, between the uh, restaurant and uh, I think it was an apartment building 
right next door on Piedmont Street. But it seems like yesterday at times, and then it seems like something you never forget, and there are things that still bother me. I can't be in a crowd and get people pushing me. And if I'm out somewhere, staying at a hotel or a motel, I have to be near the door. Exits, that was the big thing. Uh, that mocked me. From that point on, whenever I go to a theater, a house, or I'm always looking for an exit. Not one exit, but more than one exit, because I realize that there's always more than one escape route. If something's jammed up, you can go to another one. And that's stuck in my mind to this day. I, I, when I go anywhere, I'm always looking subconsciously and consciously exit, how to get out.